The man you're about to meet is one of those people you hope has all of the right answers. Well, he probably doesn't have all of them, but he has a lot more of those right answers than I do. John Roseman is a columnist and psychologist, right? right? Yes. And you specialize in kids and families and things like that. Boy, do I need your help, especially with kids. But <laughs> I'll start the meter running. Kids. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, uh, the, this couch is not the right shape. Right. <laughs> but in any case, uh, what brings you here? Well, I'm going to be doing a uh, seminar tomorrow at St. Francis Hospital. They have a monthly seminar called Saturday Seminar. It's part of their family workshop service, which is an educational referral service. And um, the workshop will start at 10 and last until 2. So what can somebody expect to get out of it, I guess, is the question. I know that your columns are not only informative, but uh, laced with humor periodically. And oh, that's the kind of thing that... Uh, that is expected at the seminar? Well, I, I hope that it will be a light-hearted seminar. I don't want to make it too serious. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, parenting and raising children and um, just in general creating a healthy family. The uh, title of the workshop is Creating the Child Wonderful. And uh, I'll be talking about some steps that parents can take to facilitate the child rearing process and just in general make family life a more enjoyable thing for everybody concerned. Creating the child wonderful is something that anybody who's a parent of course is interested in and the children are wondering well why not me or something like that. Uh, give us the first step. Well the first step that I talk about Peter is uh, centering the family around the needs of if it is a two-parent family the needs of the marriage if it's a single parent family then I call it a parent centered family the idea there that parents need to be in control, that they need to set the direction that the family is taking and uh, uh, clarify the values of the family for the children and so on and so forth. One thing that a lot of parents, uh, myself included, sometimes wonder, so I've told the kid the same thing 16 times. Now I know according to memory they're supposed to be able to remember it after 16 times it goes through, it's supposed to stay there, right. So why doesn't the kid remember? Well, I, I tell parents that words evaporate in the minds of children <laughs> like drops of water on a hot griddle. You know? uh, really, the, the best instruction for children, particularly young children, is not verbal instruction alone. Most people think, we, you know, if you tell a child something enough, it's going to absorb finally. But you need to couple the verbal, the words, with something concrete, with action, with demonstration and example in order for children, particularly young children, to understand because they're so very concrete-minded. Well, let's talk about particularly young children. I have one that's two months away from being a child. Um, you have heard about the people playing the tapes on the mother's belly so the child inside the womb can hear and allegedly grow. What do you think about that? Oh, um, <laughs> why did I have to bring that up? Right, right. I think it's, uh, I don't know, I sometimes think of it as voodoo, perhaps. I, I, uh, I really don't think that it's, it's that important that you do that kind of thing, or even important at all. I think people take, one of the, one of the points that I'm going to be making tomorrow, Peter, is that people take this whole area of raising children much too seriously. People go at it uh, far too scientifically and far too intellectually. And what we need to do is really relax and take it easy. Our children will, if we're relaxed parents, if we are uh, relaxed in our authority and relaxed in our nurturing toward them, will grow up to be healthy, whole people. And it's not, uh, I don't think, important that children at the age of three be able to distinguish Mozart from Debussy. Hmm. Well, when they get to the age of uh, 33, maybe they can pick it up if they like it. If they like it, right. What it sounds like is you're saying to me, well, let the child develop in the way the child will develop and just guide rather than, rather than force. Well, you know, children really do know how to grow up. All human beings do know how to grow up. And if we're put into environments that nurture the naturalness of the growth process, then, um, and, and the growth process is guided by parents who understand the nature of the growth process and know how they interface with that process, then the... Um, the child is going to turn out okay, I believe. You mentioned that some parents uh, parent too intellectually. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a result of all of the books that get written by people 
in well your profession and other professions sure. child child psychologists who say this is the way you have to do it and we've got all this research to back it up and so that's why we say it we have become as a as a culture and this is an ironic thing for me to say because i'm an author and i'm a newspaper columnist but as a culture we have become far far too dependent on the expert for telling us how to do things we've become far too dependent on lawyers to tell us how to negotiate disputes and far too dependent on psychologists and other parenting experts for telling us how to raise our children i am an advocate of returning to a more commonsensical more um, spontaneous if you will uh... attitude toward parenthood I guess, I guess what you're talking about is that little voice in the back of your head that says, why am I doing this? I'm talking about being a parent. Sure. You catch yourself in the middle of some kind of a situation and you say, no, this is wrong. I know this is wrong, but I can't stop now. Uh, I guess what you're saying is listen to the little voice in the back of your head that says, wait a minute, try something different. Well, and, and what I'm also saying is that uh, if you read something that an expert says, and I say this in my book uh, at the very end, that uh, if you read an expert and you disagree with the expert, give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Well, John Roseman, thanks for coming in. This has Thank been you, Peter. informative. Now I'm going to take all of this home and put it to good use. All right.